Yo, what is up you guys? It is Max here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to solve string to integer, aka A2I, in Java. So, what we wanna do is we wanna implement this function to convert a string into a 32-bit signed integer, which is just four bytes. So, they give us pretty much how we should implement the algorithm, like right in the problem description. So we just have to uh, convert the problem statement into code, which is a lot of, usually a lot of the cases, but it's always more tricky than that, than you think. So uh, we ha I'll show you some test cases here. So if we have 42, we just convert it to 42. If we have mm, a bunch of leading white space, we ignore it. We see that there's a negative sign, so we'd flip the sign. Um, we'd have a signed variable. We flip that and then parse 42 and get negative 42. And they kind of detail the steps here as well. Uh, if we'd encounter these digits first, so we'd read them in, and then as soon as we encounter our first non-digit, we'd stop there, and it's in the range. Here, we haven't encountered any like digits, so we'd immediately return zero. And here, it's actually this number is actually less than the integer, um, the integer's um, min value, so we only have four bytes to store this number, so. Basically, we are going to clamp it to the min value of an integer. And same thing would go for the max value of an integer. If it was way over the max, so we would then clamp it to the max value of an integer. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to get into like step by step how we would solve this algorithm. But first, um, the trick is when you encounter like these characters, you have these characters that are digits. Each character has an ASCII, uh, this is the character, and its decimal value um, is, I have this ASCII table pretty much, but each character has a decimal value as well. So zero has a decimal value of 48, if we're talking about the character to decimal. And then nine, the character, has a decimal value of 58. So let's say we had the, we were iterating over our string and we encounter the character six. How will we get it to decimal form? Because the decimal form of six is just 54. Well, if you subtract the character zero from the characters, uh, if you subtract the character six from the character zero, you get six because 54 minus 48 is six. And that's the trick that you'd use to like extract these, um, the decimal value of these characters. So I kind of wanted to show how that works before we like jump into the code. All right, so let's go through how you solve it. Um, let's, uh, I was debugging before this, but why don't we actually, yeah, sure. Why don't we just debug this? So I have these test cases um, and I have my class with my function that I'm trying to implement. So I'm passing in this test case um, into this instance of my class and looks like negative 42. We have a bunch of white space. This is a really good example. So I'm going to start debugging debug as tester or Java application. All right. So also I don't need this debug window. So let me shrink this and all right, we've started. All right. So first, if the string is just an empty string, you, you want to just return zero. It doesn't matter. Um, there's no in decimals to be parsed. Here. There's no um, digits to be parsed here. So we're going to use three helper variables throughout this whole algorithm. Res was going to be basically what we use to add up all the, all the digits. I is going to be our iteration variable and sign. We just um, initialize to one because we're just going to assume by default that they're positive integers. But if we We'll get into that later if we encounter the plus or the minus. So first we get rid of any white space. And as you can see, there is actually white space in this. There is, so if we go to the beginning, one, two, two spaces at the beginning of this. So let's step through. You can see sign it. we, we uh, initialized all these variables. We iterate one, two, Okay, we stopped, we got through all the white space. And the reason why I put this i's uh, less than s dot length is so we stay within the uh, bounds of the string that they gave us. And it would short circuit and not actually test this um, char at. So 
Uh, now let's check for sign. We iterated over all the white space. That was step one of what they gave us. Step two, check if the next character is a minus or a plus, and that would determine what our sign would be. So why don't we just do that? We stay within the bounds of the string. We say if the character is a plus or a minus, um, we'd enter in here. We already initialized it to like what the plus uh, would be. So we just check again if it's the minus. And if it is, it is in this case, we flip the sign to actually going to be negative one. And we post increment i because we want to move on to our next character, which is four. Here, we're going to once again stay within the bounds of the string. And we're going to check, hey, is the character at i greater than or equal to the character zero? and less than or equal to the character nine. As we were talking about here on this ASCII table, we want to just make sure that we are within the bounds of what a digit is. So um, we are just going to be, uh, that's basically the requirement to stay in the loop. And I'm going to talk about how you actually update the cumulative sum as you're going through these. So let's say we have a 42, right? We encounter at first the, the character four. We take, and so res is initialized to zero. So we take zero times 10, which is zero, plus character at i uh, minus the character uh, zero. And I kind of, ex I explained this at the beginning of the video. So the character four minus the character zero, we get, okay, four minus the character zero, 52 minus 48 is four. And so, we get four res now becomes four next iteration um, would be two so we take um, res is now four four times ten is forty plus and then we get result in two so we get 42 so that's how that works but we also have to be wary of if we're going to be going over the max value or be going under the min value of what an integer can hold uh, space wise in memory it can only hold four hold four bytes so here, before we do this multiplication, we want to check if the, re the result will be over the integer the max value divided by 10 because we're multiplying by 10 down here. Or if the integer is equal to the max value and its last uh, digit is greater than 7. Why are we checking this? Well, if we look at the max value of an integer, let's say it was equal to this number except... Um, at the very end, it was an 8. Well, that would still be over the uh, space for an integer there. So we'd want to uh, basically clamp it to the integer max value. And same thing, if you look at the min value, let's say we were looking at the same number and we're checking is it greater than 7. Well, that's still the case uh, here. Like you'd still, like even if it was 8, you'd still be returning the um, min value of an integer there. So we just check if it's greater than seven. That's pretty much it for this one. And then, well, in this case, we're not going to be clamping because it's only negative 42. So we get the four, we get 42. We're out of the length of the string. We return sign multiplied by 42. And that gives us negative 42. We print it out to the console and boom, we've now completed the algorithm. So. I'm gonna basically copy paste this and make sure that it passes all the test cases on uh, passes all the test cases on lead code. And that should be the end of that. Um, let's do this. All right. And submit. Let's see and accepted. All right. I hope this video was useful for you and I hope to see you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.